now let us discuss about computer system organization uh, we have three topics in computer system organization in this video we are going to discuss about the first topic that is computer system or operation we have two more topics such as storage structure and io structure we will discuss those two topics in the next two, two videos so this is the uh, block diagram this is the diagram for a modern computer system a modern computer system contains one or more cpus and uh, device driver files so all these are nothing but uh, device driver files disk controller is nothing but a device driver file usb controller is nothing but a device driver file graphics adapter is nothing but a device driver file so here a modern computer system contains cpu and uh, device driver files device driver controllers and a memory which are connected through a common bus system so this line represents bus here disk controller disk controller is in charge of the disk so that means uh, the data can be uh, disk controller can interact with the disk if, if you take cpu cpu can't interact directly with the disk cpu can interact with disk controller through this bus various disk controller can interact with disk likewise usb controller is in charge of various input output devices this is nothing but mouse keyboard and printer next graphics adapter is nothing but uh, that uh, monitor uh, graphics driver file so graphics adapter is in charge of the monitor so here disk controller contains local buffer disk uh, disk controller internally contains local buffer every driver file will have a local buffer usb controller also contains a local buffer here the data will be read from the disk and the corresponding data will be stored in local buffer of the disk controller so likewise the data which resides in local buffer of disk controller can be written into the disk so here the point is cpu and uh, these device controllers can work concurrently can work simultaneously so cpu can do its own task whereas these device controllers will do its own task here this memory is nothing but main memory whereas this disk is nothing but hard disk that is secondary memory so here whenever disk controller that is whenever the local buffer of the disk controller has some data then disk controller will sends a signal to the cpu that signal is called as interrupt so when the disk controller or usb controller will sends the interrupt signal whenever the disk controller has some data to send it will sends an interrupt signal to the cpu now it is the responsibility of the cpu to transfer the data from local buffer to the main memory why because we know that cpu can execute say program only when the program resides in main memory only so now whenever disk controller has some data then it will sends an interrupt signal to the cpu now cpu what cpu will do cpu transfers the data from local buffer to the the data from local buffer of disk controller to the main memory so now cpu can execute the program so once that program execution is over then once again the data which is in memory will be transferred to the local buffer of the disk controller by cpu here now let us discuss about bootstrap loader and after that we will see about interrupt signal in detail so bootstrap loader program all we know about what is bootstrapping bootstrap loader program booting means whenever 
we switch on the computer whenever the power is turned on then the bootstrap loader program will be executed where that bootstrap loader program will be stored it will be stored in rom rom means read only memory read only memory means we can perform only read operation whereas if bootstrap loader program resides in ram then we know the problem with ram ram is a volatile memory so when the power is turned off then the contents of the ram will be lost so that's why at the time of system manufacture at the time of system manufacture this this bootstrap loader program will be stored in rom so whenever we switch on the computer then the bootstrap loader program will loads operating system kernel into the main memory what is a kernel kernel is nothing but operating system only kernel mainly contains important tasks of the operating system so whenever we switch on the computer bootstrap loader program loads operating system kernel into the main memory that kernel contains important tasks of the operating system such as every device will have a driver file so all those driver files will be loaded why because we can work with the keyboard only when the driver file is installed we can work with monitor only when the corresponding driver file is loaded so likewise cpu will have several registers like program counter instruction register all those registers will be initialized so that is about uh, what is bootstrap loader now let uh, let's come into the topic so whenever disk controller has some data then it will sends a signal to the cpu that signal is called as interrupt so let us assume that cpu is executing a program let that instruction is address is 100 let the next instruction is 101 so let us assume that cpu receives an interrupt signal while it is executing in address while it is executing this instruction 100 instruction then cpu after executing that instruction cpu simply stops execution of the currently running program it stores the next instruction address that is 101 address in a register called program counter why because we know that program counter contains address of the next instruction to be executed and then cpu control will be shifted to the isr isr stands for interrupt service routine program so cpu control will be shifted to the interrupt service routine program so it will executes the interrupt service routine program so execution of interrupt service routine program is nothing but transferring the data from memory to this local buffer or transferring the data from local buffer to the memory so once the interrupt service routine program is executed then the cpu control will be shifted to the original program so what is the next instruction address 101 so with the help of the program counter cpu control will, will be shifted there so in this way interrupts will be handled now let us see how the interrupts will be handled with the help of the diagram here we have cpu and io device we have two stages of cpu here this top stage this top stage this is nothing but user processing execution pace and this down pace this down is nothing but io interrupt processing so cpu is in two stages it may either executes the program or it may executes the isr interrupt service routine program likewise io device is in two stages this top stage is called as idle io device is idle whereas this bottom stage is called as it is transferring some data it is transferring some data here we have some io request transferred and uh, yeah initially see this space this uh, top portion is nothing but cpu is executing a program here cpu is executing a program at that time uh, what io device is doing here this this part specifies that in this duration io device is idle but here io device is transferring some data io device is transferring some data from uh, from disk to uh, local buffer or local buffer to the disk whenever io device has some data which is available then what does io device will do io device will sends interrupt signal to the cpu 
here at this location cpu receives the interrupt signal so whenever cpu receives the interrupt signal then CP cpu stops executing the currently running program now cpu executes interrupt service routine program so this down portion is nothing but interrupt service routine program so after executing the interrupt service routine program cpu starts executing the same program cpu starts executing the remaining instructions of the same program here what is happening so it is uh, it, it it transmitted an interrupt signal to the cpu and after that this portion it specifies that yeah here what is this portion it, it is what io request it is io request here io request means uh, io device is uh, transferring some data io sends a request here in this this duration io device is transferring some data io device is transferring some data and after that it generated interrupt signal okay so here this space this space specifies that io device is ideal this stop portion is ideal whereas this space specifies that this down portion specifies that io device is transferring some data so once the transferring is over that means io device has some data then io device sends an interrupt signal to the cpu so whenever cpu receives the interrupt signal it executes the interrupt service routine program so this is nothing but that uh, diagram so this is about uh, computer system operation in computer system organization